If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Philippians in the third chapter there, I want to read a few verses for us. Perhaps they are familiar to some of us, maybe not so familiar to others, but nonetheless, it is a what we call a hallmark passage in Scripture. We've heard it quoted a number of different ways in different settings. I've preached it several times, and I believe that it is fitting for the occasion as we begin this new year this new decade. In Philippians chapter number 3, beginning with verse number 12, you'll find these words. Paul says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Our theme for 2020 is focus. Focus. And I want to talk this year from the, for this today from the subject, the work of focus. The work of focus. Our theme for the year is focus. You hear some variation of focus throughout the year. Our vision for our church, the vision for our church is we grow people to reach the world. We grow people to reach the world. That's our vision. That's that's who we aspire to be. We want to be a church, a congregation where when people encounter us, as we take people in, they are growing and developing. And so we want to make that to be a matter of our focus. What are we focusing on? And we'll talk about that as we move through the year. But today... I just want to set it up. Can I do that? We're going to, I'm calling it the work of focus. And let me just tell you a few things that you might find interesting. I'm a big sports guy. A big sports guy. And my team, unfortunately, we started out with so much promise. And we are not playing in the postseason. Surprise. I know, I know you're surprised, I know, I know, I'm struggling with it, but we at home with the Lions and the Browns and a whole bunch of other teams. The Patriots are going home, they home now too, they they home, they home, they home. But you know, in sports, they have what's called these pregame rituals. You ever watch the beginning before the kickoff? You ever watch some of the coverage and you see guys out on the field and they do some weird stuff, you know. You, you see guys, they, 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 they got headphones on and they bobbing and weaving and, and sometimes you wonder if you're not careful, you don't know what sport you're about to watch. Some guys, they're getting ready. They're on the football field, but they're boxing. One NFL player, was a former player, he would, before every game, he'd have the trainer slap him several times, a slap. The pregame ritual. Michael Jordan, his airness, what they called him. Michael Jordan, in every game, wore two pair of shorts. Two pair of shorts. He'd have his Chicago Bulls shorts on, but underneath every game, he'd wear a pair of shorts from the University of North Carolina, his alma mater, the pregame ritual. Hall of Fame third baseman Wade Boggs from the Boston Red Sox, they called him Chicken Man. Before every game, he would have chicken. They called him Chicken Man. Jason Taylor, NBA basketball star, would sleep in the opposing team's shorts every night before the game. 
not, not knockoffs, but official, official NBA gear, the opposing team, he'd wear their shorts the night before the game, pregame rituals. Serena Williams, perhaps the greatest female tennis player ever. She would make everybody who would attend her matches, they'd have to sit in the same seats, the same way, no matter where they played. When she looked up there, everybody had to be in their seat. Before the first serve, she bounced the tennis ball five times and twice before the second serve. Pre-game rituals. When I played baseball, we had a guy, he always had the left pocket turned inside out in his pants. Pre-game ritual. I was reading about another player, he'd always play Christmas music before the game. No matter what time of year, Christmas music. All these things, they sound trivial and corny and wacky, but to the athlete, it was critical and it was important because it was what they needed to ensure optimal performance. Or, in other ways, for them, in other words, for them to obtain optimal performance, it was a part of their focus routine. That they couldn't go out and compete without having first prepared themselves mentally to engage in the contest. They'd have to be mentally prepared before they would take the field. And so mental preparation required them to go through whatever their exercises and rituals were so that they felt like they were in the best mental space possible. Paul here writing in this letter of thanksgiving to the church at Philippi for their, for their generosity while he is in prison gets to this place now where he is writing to them not so much about focus, but nonetheless he is putting life in perspective for them. We take Paul's argument now to the church at Philippi and it will help us as we prepare ourselves as we enter into a new year that we want to be a focused people. And I tell you that you don't get success without having some kind of focus. Everybody in here anticipates and desires to have success in 2020, but I promise you, you won't make it without some focus. Everybody in here has set some goals for yourself and some dreams and aspirations, some God-sized stuff. And God is telling us, you won't make it if you don't focus. And so I want to take some arguments and lift some things from these verses about focus. Are you listening to me? The first thing is this, that focus is a continuous work. Let me, let me, let me show you what I mean. Paul says that not that I already obtained all this. What, what is the all this prior to this? Paul makes an argument about that I may know Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. He's saying that I desire to know Christ. I want to be like him. I want to, I want to know everything that there is to know to be one of his children. And Paul is saying, I'm not there yet. I still got some growing to do. And Paul realizes that he is not a finished work, but rather he is a work in progress. In fact, the closer we get to Christ, the more work we realize we need. Ain't that the truth? If you're really serious about walking with God, that you'll never find yourself in a place where you got it all together. In fact, if you think you got it all together, keep your mouth shut because you are sadly mistaken. 
that nobody is a finished work and nobody is perfect. Nobody has reached a place of perfection that we all got some stuff that needs to be adjusted. We all got some stuff that needs to be improved. We all got some stuff that needs to be worked on. We all got some dents in us. We all got some scratches on us. We all need to be buffed out and polished and shined up. We all need to be conditioned and shaped and redefined. We all need to go through some stuff because we got some stuff about us that makes us less than desirable. Everybody in here got some stuff about you that just ain't quite right. Can I get a witness in here? Don't come on, talk back to me today now. Don't make me work too hard on the first Sunday of the year that everybody in here got some stuff. And let me tell you something, that Christian maturity and spirituality knows no such thing as complacency. A growing Christian is never satisfied with where they are. A growing Christian will say, I'm blessed, but I got a long way to go. A growing Christian knows that the Lord is not finished with me yet. A growing Christian will realize there's more territory, more to be done, more to gain, more to have. I can be better. I can be a bigger person. God has called me to more than what I am right now. That's how growing Christians think. In fact, growing Christians, in fact, growing Christians are not ashamed to admit that I too have sinned and I fall short of the glory of God. Growing Christians don't take themselves so serious. In fact, growing and mature Christians got patience when other folk fall. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but you need to hear this, that if there's some folk who trying to throw your stuff in your face and they call themselves Christians, they're not growing Christians. Growing Christians don't exalt themselves above other people and talk about folk about what they got going on. So what? You've been delivered from it, but the Lord ain't done with you yet. And just because the God got you out of it and somebody else is in it, maybe you need to help them come out of it as well. Ain't nobody in here perfect and nobody is a completed work. God is still working on me. Be patient with me. God is not finished with me. Forgive me if I have wronged you. Forgive me if I have hurt you. Forgive me if I have not done what you wanted me to do. But God is still at work. And when I find myself frustrated, the Lord reminds me, Earl, I ain't done with him yet. Just like I ain't done with you. And so when we are in this thing, in our matter of focus, we realize that God is still at work, Paul tells the Philippian church. Listen, I know I had a whole lot of stuff about me that made me something, but still I ain't made it yet. I'm still not there. Nobody is in a position to boast. If anybody could, Paul could. But he didn't. Therefore, who are we to boast? Quit talking about what you did in 2019, 18, 17, 15, 73, 61. So what? God is doing something today. Preach, Pastor Earl. Mature believers don't exalt themselves over other people. Because a mature believer knows it's only by the grace of God. A mature believer knows it ain't nothing but grace that you're looking at right now. A mature believer realizes just how fragile life is. James says, what is your life? You are but a vapor. You are but a mist. Here today and gone tomorrow. Ain't nobody in here permanent. Nobody in here is bulletproof. And nobody in here is invincible. All of us in here got some cracks in us. 
All of our lives are nothing but a house of cards. Blow on us the wrong way on the wrong day at the wrong time. And we could all slip and mess this thing up. But only by his grace am I here today. And it is God that is holding me together. And it is blood that has covered my sin and washed me whiter than snow. I haven't made it yet, church. God is still working on me. But let me tell you another part about focus. Can I keep going? Focus only looks forward. Look, look, look here in the text. He said, Paul says, but there's one thing that I do. There's one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. I press onward. He says, I got to forget what is behind me. Focus looks forward and not backward. See, this word, this, this, this whole matter of forgetting what is behind, Paul is not being insensitive. He's not telling you to just forget stuff and and because because some of y'all about to get upset what you mean forget that was the love of my life that was this i was that and this and that and the other you, you telling me to forget that hurt all that listen forgetting means that 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 you got you can't hold on to the past with a tight grip gotta hold the past loosely don't let it have an unhealthy, don't, don't, let, don't have an unhealthy appreciation for the past. Let, let me see if I can help you some kind of way. You, let, hey, you know, you got to be careful now we talk about fashion because now you don't know if anything ever goes out of style. I, I would say, I would say, you know, you, you don't go walking around in bell bottoms in 2020, but somewhere... Somewhere, somebody going to have some. You just watch. You, 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 I dare not say, you don't walk around in platform shoes in 2020, but, but, but I have seen some shoes. And I'm not so sure. Can't say you don't walk around with an afro. Can't say that either can't say that either but I bet you won't go to Best Buy and say excuse me can you show me where your rotary phones are <laughs> right you can't you can't go you can't in fact there's not really you can't even go I'm about to say you can't go to the record store because you know record stores but you ain't gonna go nowhere look can you show me where your tapes are Tapes, you know. In fact, they don't even say that no more. Be careful. You told somebody, man, I bought this tape the other day. They're like, what? Scotch? <laughs> Duct tape? <laughs> Gonna date yourself now. You like, where you been? You, you been on vacation? You play tapes no more. But you can't. You, you, you can't live in the past. He says you got you to gotta forget. Don't allow the past to have significant influence on the present and your future. Living in the past will cause you to forfeit your future. Church, let me tell you something. It's 2020. Newsflash, it's a whole nother year. I know 19 might have been your year, but guess what? 19 and come and gone. We are in 2020, and Paul tells us now that when we focus, you don't focus looking backwards. Focus is, focus is always forward-facing. And when we are doing this matter of forgetting what lies behind us, we need to forget the good as well as the bad. That you got to be careful about holding on to the good in the past because if you hold on to the good in the past, at some point what was good yesterday going to be obsolete today. I know it brought you success in yesteryear, but it may no longer be effective. 
And I know folk get uncomfortable when I talk about this because after all, we remember how we looked and how proud we were and how everybody looked at us and thought of us when we did X, Y, and Z. And so because we looked so good and people thought so highly of us that we're going to keep on doing X, Y, and Z. And if you keep on doing it, you're going to be doing X, Y, and Z while the rest of the world is on down the world doing something else. And nobody cares about X, Y, and Z but you. And you fill in what X, Y, and Z is. Paul tells the church at Philippi, he's trying to encourage them. He tells them, wants them to know that, listen, I need you all to understand this, that these chains advance the gospel. I know that I'm in prison and I know that I'm in hardship, but please know that I am not mad about it. That I know that God is at work in my life and therefore what you see today is not going to always be this way. And what happened to me last year, it happened last year, but God is a God of today and tomorrow as well. And last year is old news. And guess what? It hurts you, but here you are today. You made it. You made it. God delivered you. God brought you out. God raised you up. God made a way. God answered your prayer. God is still at work and is not done yet. He says, forgetting what lies behind. It. You got to let go of the good stuff, but also you got to let go of the bad stuff as well. Leave the past in the past because if you hold on to the bad, it can paralyze you. Let me tell somebody this. You made a mistake in 2019, but guess what? It's 2020 now. You didn't die. And by virtue of the fact that you are still alive tells me that God didn't finish with you. Now, they may try to throw it up in your face, but they can't do nothing about it. They may try to hold it against you, but God isn't holding it against you. And therefore, if God's not holding it against you, stop holding it against yourself. That you are bigger than your failures. You are more than what you have gone through. You are not the person they say that you are. And even if you are still struggling with some stuff, God can make you better. God can make you whole. God can pick you up. God can straighten you out. The Bible says that we are his workmanship, created to do work, good works in advance. That means then that you are a masterpiece in the hands of God. You may look a little rough around the edges, but God... God knows how to make it just how he wants you to be. We are nothing but clay in the master's hand. And so tell the next person who got something to say about your past, just let them know that that might have been what I did, but that's not who I am. God is still working on me, and I am an unfinished work, and I know that I can and will be better than then. God wants us all to know. That as you focus in 2020, you can't focus with your eyes looking in the rearview mirror. <clears throat> I don't care how skilled of a driver you are, but your rearview mirror will always be smaller than the windshield. And your rearview mirror is nothing more than just for a point of reference, but that's it. But we look out the windshield, church. We look forward and we move forward because God is in the future and God is moving forward and God has already dealt with the past. In the past, Jesus hung on Calvary's cross. In the past, they buried him in a buried tomb. In the past, he rose with all power in his hands. Death has already been dealt with. So stop living like a dead person and live like a live person God God wants to take us places beyond where we are right now and sometimes the only reason why you can't be anywhere else is because you're still thinking about where you used to be you're bigger than your past if the bad is in the past that means God has delivered you. That if, if, if this is a different day, why should I live today 
like yesterday. Let me just tell you that you have the rest of your life. And you have the rest of your life to live differently than you did yesterday. You may still have the scars from yesterday. But that's all they are, scars. But the potential for tomorrow is infinite. And don't waste tomorrow's grace. Don't waste today's grace. Worrying about yesterday's stuff that you can't do anything about. I hope somebody is listening to that. Again, I'm just going to keep saying it's 2020 now. Guess what? And forgetting what lies behind that has to do with also letting go of the people who offended you in the past. It's a message of forgiveness, and that's a whole nother sermon. I don't have time to get into it, but let me just tell you, yeah, I'm going to give you that. They hurt you. So now what? They did you wrong. Now what? You, you're right. You're right. You didn't deserve it. But it happened. Now what? I know you got all kind of whatever, but don't, don't waste. Don't waste this good grace trying to punish the people for what they did to you yesterday. When you see them out there living their best life going on with their lives, and you stuck. Forgetting what lies behind. Paul says, I press. This brings me to this last point. Focus is goal-oriented. This is let's talk about the work of focus. When we're, when we're talking about focus in 2020, there's got to be a goal attached to it. Paul says, I press toward the mark of the prize. Press is a word that it's, it comes out of this athletic, athleticism. It, it implies opposition. Paul is saying that there is work that I must do, and I must work against stuff, forces, people thoughts, circumstances that exist to keep me from becoming all that I can be. Paul is saying that I got to press through some stuff and press against some stuff after all because there is a prize on the other side of it. Again, I'm going to keep on saying this till you get it. Paul says that I got to press through. I got to press my way. I got to work against. I got to work through some stuff because there is a prize. And I'm telling you that if it's of anything that is of value out there, it comes at a price. And so if you're praying that God would make it easy, don't waste your time with that. Because if I can get it easy, then it wasn't worth anything in the first place. But if it's something that I had to work hard for, I'm going to cherish it. And if I'm working hard for it, I know it's got some value. And so he had to press through some stuff. And 2020 is your year of pressing as well. You got to press through bad attitudes. You got to press through sickness. You got to press through people lying on you. You got to press through bad things. You got to press through bad weather. You got to press through bad money. You got to press through bad seasons. You got to press through bad times. But all the more you got to press. And in my pressing, I'm praying. And in I'm praying, I'm singing and I'm praising and I'm worshiping and I'm trusting and I'm believing God. I may cry some tears, but I'm still pressing. I may be overwhelmed at times, but I'm still pressing. I may not like how it feels, but I'm still pressing I gotta press my way through this and press my way through that knowing that there's a prize on the other side so church let me tell you we're gonna keep on praying we're gonna keep on praising we're gonna keep on dancing we're gonna keep on worshiping we're gonna keep on believing we're gonna keep on trusting we're gonna keep on singing our songs we're gonna keep on clapping our hands we're gonna keep on praying these prayers because we got to press through this stuff because there is a prize on the other side that it calls us heavenward in Christ 
Jesus. I struggled with this whole matter of, of Paul, what you talking about? Pressing toward the mark for this prize. And let me tell you something, that the prize, this target, there must be a target in our focus. There must be something that pulls you beyond where you are. And it must be bigger than where you are. It pulls you beyond where you are. And it's bigger than where you are. And that's where we insert this word heaven. Paul says that it calls me heavenward. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Listen to all those words. I press toward the mark, the target of the prize, which is the prize of the high calling. High calling means that it's bigger than down here. High calling or heavenward, which means it's bigger than this little stuff down here. High call, which means then that it's bigger than what my money can buy. It's bigger than what my friends talk about. It's bigger than the house that I live in. It's bigger than the job that I work on. It's bigger than that. It's toward the high call, which is in Christ Jesus. Paul says, I'm pressing my way through some stuff because I'm not worried about the trivial trappings and trimmings of this world. I'm not going to get tied up over the trinkets of this life, but I'm not going to get caught up in petty stuff of this world. I got a higher call on my life. God is calling me higher than this. And so I'm going higher than trivial people, higher than petty people, higher than trinkets and traps, higher than music and this, higher than houses and cars and higher than the neighborhood and higher than my supervisor and higher than everybody else that's trying to pull me down. God is trying to call me heavenward and when you got a heavenly gaze you can't worry about little people. When you got a heavenly gaze you can't worry about trivial matters. When you got a heavenly gaze you can't be concerned about a cold. You can't be concerned about sickness. You can't be concerned about just little stuff because you know that God God's got greater for you. He's got greater stuff on the other side. That there's more to life than where I drive and where I live and where I eat and what I wear. But life is about so much more than that. And I want everything that God has for me. And I know that Jesus didn't die so that I could get a new wardrobe. Jesus didn't die so I could get a better car. He didn't die so that I could have a better house. But he died that I might be with him in heaven for eternity. And so I want to live my life pressing my way on my way to be with my God and to be with my Lord. But on my way, I want you to know how good God is. Every step of the way, I'm going to tell somebody along the way, God is good and his mercy endures forever. On my way, I'm going to praise the Lord. On my way, I'm going to tell him thank you. While I'm pressing, I'm going to tell him, Lord, thank you for this. And Lord, thank you for that. While I'm pressing, I'm going to let him know, Lord, I thank you for taking me through it. God, thank you for bringing me out. God, thank you for how you're using me. God, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. God, I give your name praise. I will bless your name, God, at all times, God. God, you're worthy of my goodness. God, you're worthy of my praise. Lord, I give you the highest praise. Hallelujah to your name, God. If it had not been for you, Lord, I would not be be here right now but God I thank you for bringing me here anyway God I thank you for doing what you're doing God I thank you for raising me up God I thank you for such a time as this hallelujah hallelujah focus 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 Focus. Focus. It's got to be goal or in it, church. Have to be thinking about something bigger than yourself. You got to be looking at something bigger than right now. You got to be. You got to be pressing towards something 
greater, greater than this little stuff. It's a prize. It's a high call. Heavenward. In Christ Jesus. Paul says, that's what I'm living for. Paul said, he said, for me to live is Christ. And we know that living is suffering. Living is hard. Living is trial. Living is tribulation. Living is struggle. Living is strain. Living is being misunderstood. Living is getting sick. Living is getting broke. Living is laughing on occasion. Living is hurting on occasion. Living is having joy sometimes. Living is struggling a lot of times. Living is being misunderstood. Living is being taken advantage of. Living is running out of money. Living is running out of resource. Living is running out of air. Living is running out of time. Living is living from check to check. Anybody been living before? Living is struggling on occasion. Living is when life pressing against you. Living is losing hope. Living is your hair falling out. Living is gaining weight. Living is your back going out. Living is your feet getting tired. Living is your body getting Living out on you. Living is your blood pressure rising. Living is your blood sugar rising. Living is your body failing. Living is all that Paul says for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. And he says, I got so much more coming for me. That's why I ain't worried about my life down here. Because I know there's another life to come. And when I die, I'm going to see him as he is. When I die, I'm going to walk on streets paved with gold. Focus, church. Focus. Now listen, I'm not, I'm not the preacher that's going to stand up here and shout you crazy because in three days, you're going to have what you ain't never had before. I'm not the preacher that's going to tell you you're going to be a CEO by this time next year. You're going to own the company. And they're going to come and beg for you. And I, that, that's not the Lord hadn't gifted me that way. And I'm not talking about those who the Lord may have. But I am going to tell you that God has a greater existence than what we have right now. I am going to tell you that God can do some stuff bigger than what you're seeing right now. I can tell you that if you trust God, he will do what you've never seen him do before. I once, was, I once was young, but now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. I don't know what the other folk may say, but I can tell you that God can be trusted. I can tell you that God can be trusted. I will tell you that God can be trusted. I don't know how he will do it, but I can tell you that he can be trusted. I don't know when God will show up, but I can tell you that he will show up. I don't know how God will do it, but I can tell you that he can be trusted. I don't know when God will make it happen, but I can tell you that God will make a way out of no way. God will open doors that no man can shut. God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask or imagine. I don't know how God does it all. And it's not my job to know how. But I can just tell you that it can be trusted. And I wouldn't tell you nothing that I don't know for myself. Y'all, 2019 was hard for me. I watched some people close to me hurt. I lost some people close to me. There were some days, y'all, I didn't want to get out of bed. There were some days I didn't want to come to this place. There were some days I didn't want to open the Bible. There were some days I didn't want to pray. There were some days I didn't want to read. There were some days I didn't want to serve. 
There were some days when I didn't think I was going to make it, but I heard the voice of God telling me. I heard him telling me, fight on, man. I got you. I don't know how God does these things, but I'm telling you, God is real. God is strong, and he's patient, and he's kind, and he's powerful, and God never loses. And if God never loses, then I will never lose myself. Paul tells us that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So y'all, it's a new year. 19 is over. I'm running on 2020, Grace. I'm waiting on my upgrade. I'm going to trust God and walk with God and watch God work. Who's ready to watch him with me? Who's ready to watch him with me? Who's ready to watch God do what only God can do? Who's trusting God in ways you never trusted him before? Yeah. Yeah. Bible. The Bible can be trusted. God can be trusted. It's not my gift. I'm not going to stand up here and try to say something that I don't believe the Bible says. I'm not going to get up here and try to charge you up emotionally on some stuff that sounds good. What I will do is just try to give you what God has given me. I'm going to try to encourage you with what has encouraged me. Listen, it's, it's a new year, y'all. It's a new year. It doesn't mean that 19 stuff ain't carried over into 2020. Because guess what? If you owed some money in 19 and you didn't pay it back. Can I get a witness? Landlord still wanted that check, didn't he? Citibank still wanted it. Fifth, third, Discover, American Express, MasterCard, all of them. Oh, yeah, if you was diagnosed in 2019, it might still be with you in 2020. But still, God is bigger than all of that. All of that. All of that. So I don't know what 2020 means for you. But I'm declaring for our congregation, it must be our year of focus. It must be the year where we give some greater intentionality about what we do because our resources are getting that much more scarce. So we got to be calculated with how we expend our energies and our resources. I'm not, I'm, I'm not so sure. If that, that, I'm sure that applies in your household as well. Listen, y'all, we're we going to be praying, but I'm telling you, we're on the verge of wartime. Wars impact.